Johnny Wilson is the difference between an ACC championship team and a national championship team. We can't take him off the field because he is a legit number one receiver. But if he's on the field and not playing like one, we cannot compete for a national championship. We can't. That, Bill, that 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 point that you just made is significant. That's a big that's a big statement, and it makes a lot of sense. I don't know that I would have thought about it that way prior to you making that statement, but we're in a fortunate position where we have two legitimate number one receivers. We'll talk about that in a second. But how many teams in college football have guys? Have guys. It's third and all. We came together, all three of us reaching for one common goal. This is our show. Listen, you might get perspective of something that you didn't know. We gonna go all the way real with the topics. When you see Witty P. Austin and Crockett, pressure good blisters, we stay in the pocket. Picture the run of the quarterback option. Organic process, listen and watch us. Everyone welcome, this is our casa. First and goal, second we throw. Short a few yards, third and no. Third and all, welcome to the 2-0 and o edition of the 2023 season. You know, we, we came into the game against Southern Miss, obviously an inferior opponent. However, potentially there was room there for the, the hangover, the, the the letdown, the short week, the there's so many, the, the trap, right? This could have been a trap game after a huge win against LSU on a short week against a, a bowl team from last year. This had the makings not for a loss. Like I'd never. I think this this Florida State team is too good to to have uh, even considered a loss here. But I mean, as thirty one point favorites, I I don't know that I would have felt comfortable taking the over there just because. Again, for all the reasons I just mentioned. But boy, Florida State went out and took care of business, gentlemen. Been saying it all summer. It's great to be a no. Fantastic, man. Fantastic to be a no. At the end of the day, a win is a win. Win is a win. We can complain about how the game started. Uh, we can complain about drops and other things, but we hung oh. sixty six points. Oh, we we will we will complain about that. Stay tuned. <laughs> Spoiler there alert: was, There was not. There, it wasn't long ago where we probably would have lost a game like this. So, a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's great. The the fact that we played. And I'm not even going to say we. I, the offensive line didn't look great, but, you know, you had two of your starters missing, and, and there are some aspects of them that did still look pretty good. Benson, I don't know. I, it, it almost looks like he has to get in a rhythm, and we didn't in the first half with him. And, the, and my goodness, the drops. But the fact that you still, in spite of all that, hang 31 – and take a 28 point lead in the first half. That's significant. And and when you are putting up that type of numbers or that type of effort and still hang a 21 point lead at halftime, that says something. That's a big deal. I I agree. It's it's weird because I mean there are a few things that we can nitpick and complain about and and be unsatisfied about, but I mean, like Craig just said at the end of the day, if this was 2 years ago, this is a game that could have went to the fourth quarter and we would have been on upset watch. But instead, we give you a bad game and still put up 60. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we just have to you have to accept that part of it. So so let's talk let's talk a little bit about the first half. You know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, I guess. The okay. good was the good was, isn't it crazy that in spite <laughs> in spite of putting up 31 points? We, I'll talk about Keon Coleman in a second. I, I don't the, – the good in the first half was the fact we put up 31 points and and seemingly everybody got an opportunity. I, I guess Lawrence told Philly. That'll be my good news for the for the first half. I think he looked very good. Rodney Hill looked very good. Yeah, I, I think Toa Philly uh, definitely stands out. And I know JT was – he was off a little bit. But, I mean, his athleticism, you take those legs out of the equation – and some of those fourth downs don't get converted. Those chains don't move. And we're probably in a deeper um, hole. Well, not that we were in a hole, but it doesn't come out the way it looks. So just to see his athleticism on display, you know, I think I still would say JT was still a plus in that half. It's kind of hard to get in rhythm also when balls are dropping. 
Like, oh, completely agree. And like I said, we'll, we'll talk about the drops in a second. I will say, so Jordan Travis, I, okay, let me say this. Jordan Travis was throwing absolute dimes. He was throwing darts, dropping them in the basket, and our guys just weren't catching it. So Jordan Travis, in spite of his numbers, was passing the ball very, 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 very well. He just doesn't have the stats to reflect it, unfortunately. So, I, I mean, it, it's just one of those things. And then, obviously, again, you see his escapability. On two consecutive plays, he he pulled a Mahomes out of his hat, right? Like, just one, he eludes pressure. He he runs around and, and then makes a positive gain on the – or throws the ball for a positive gain. The next one, he – same thing, get, escapes pressure, ends up doing – what looked almost like a you know backyard ball drawn up in the sand, reverse the field and takes off running. Yeah, I mean Jordan Travis is uh, he let's he's an elite he's an elite quarterback. I mean I, there's no other way around it. The the passes I, I genuinely feel like the passes that he was throwing last night there were a couple bad ones, but the passes that he was making last night that hit the receivers exactly where they needed to showed his NFL ability to scouts watching. Right. We know he can be elusive. We know he's got the press. Now, can he do those Mahomes type plays against the, the the Alabama defenses, the Georgia defenses, the Clemson defenses? We'll see. To be determined. Right. He was able to pull that off against Southern Miss. And we've seen it before. So maybe he can. But his passing last night and the location that he was placing those balls that have to be caught was was pretty elite for sure. Nice. And I will say I will say our our offensive line blocking on rushing was very good last night uh, was very good last night. So we, we did a very good job in, in, in run blocking. I and mean, they just were, they were very good in that space. Oh, um, I think my good would be defensive line. I think they were, I think they were one to show the depth depth we haven't seen in a, quite a while, especially in that first half. I mean, we're rotating guys out. I mean, Fabian love it. I don't think he really played in the first half. Truthfully, a lot, but just the the depth when it comes to being able to rotate guys and not having a huge drop off, and again getting pressure, you know, especially when it mattered with the the couple times that Southern Miss was in the red zone. But I, I think that was that was a definitely a, a good highlight for me. I think that's a good point. I mean, you see the D line just dominate and have the depth that you were referring to it just man just to see how this team has really turned around i mean norvell has really again found a way to hit the portal get the pieces that are needed to every year just take it a step further the defensive line and that's a good shout out by both of you guys phil calling it out first proc co-signing the defensive line is is elite i mean it it, it is Arguably, now I ha- it's only week two, right? But I haven't seen a better defensive line play uh, across college football. When you look front to back, now it's crazy because Jared Verse, no stats in the stat book. Braden Fisk, no stats in the stat book. Joshua Farmer, limited stats in the stat book. They didn't show up in the stat book, but you remember last week I was talking about with Jared Verse, I wanted to see a better stat line, right? This week, those guys did, did not show up in the stat book, but they made their presence felt. And I tell you what, I am impressed thoroughly by the the, the play of Braden Fisk. That guy is an absolute dog on the defensive line. Beating, I mean, he, there was one play where he he was getting double teamed, and and he collapsed the pocket in spite of a double team. And then the very next play, Jared Verse was getting double teamed. He ragdogged the defensive tackle, or excuse me, the, the offensive tackle that was guarding him, and then pushed the uh, uh, baby Gore out of the way to, to create a pressure. Baby and Gore. Let me. T- I don't know how tall he looked on TV, but in person, he looked every bit of four ten. I mean, I guess his dad wasn't that tall, but his dad is different. His dad is different. I agree. His dad is different. Baby Gore. He, on the other he hand. is too. I just think that our he. Doesn't have the people up front to to for to c- compete and dominate at against measurables. Like us. Measurables like he, matter. Like I mean, because you, I mean, you look back to his ball game last year. He put up insane numbers, over three hundred yards rushing. But yeah, um, yeah. It's, 
This is for the state defensive line, 2023, sir. You're not, you're not putting up numbers. So Trey Benson did have a great stat line. I still, after watching this game, I don't know that Rodney Hill, the combination of Rodney Hill and Lawrence Toffoli is not our best running back option. <laughs> like both of those guys just look different. Toffoli is playing at a different speed. And Rodney Hill's vision and burst. Rodney Hill's going to go down, in my opinion, of the running backs that are on the roster today. Rodney Hill will go down as the best of those by the time he leaves. I'm, I'm, I'm putting that out there now. I think it. I think his ability. He's still learning. And and the only thing I said this to someone sitting next to me. The only thing that I can foresee that's keeping him from more playing time is understanding protections. Like he must just not understand the, the nuances of picking up blitzes and stuff like that because he shows elite ability in toting the rock. So I don't, I don't, so that may be it, but I, I think it's simply he's behind Trey Benson. Um, but yeah, Trey, he still looks hesitant. To me, he looks like a player who's playing not to get hurt, at least in the first half. That changed in the second half. I don't know if he woke up, the light went off. But for the first half in the LSU game, Trey has not played like the the trade that we we witnessed second half of last season. Yeah, I I just I have a problem with you know I still to your point I feel like he's playing trepid, and we did see a light come on at the end of last year where he started playing more aggressively. He's not there yet. Like I feel like he's still first half Trey Benson. First half 2022 Trey Benson and not second half 2022 Trey Benson, where we saw him really take over. And and even, you know, I guess at some points we talked about Trayshawn Ward was at times still the better producing running back. Maybe not the better. He was reliable. the most effective. He was most more effective. reliable. Right. Effective. Most effective. Yeah. He was the most effective. Trayshawn Ward was still at times the most effective running back even late in the season. But Trey Benson had an it factor that when he was on, he was great. Right. I, we're just not seeing that yet with 2023 Trey Benson. I mean, in spurts, right? Like in, in small spaces. But I think I I think we all hope that we would see a better version, the best version of 2022 Benson we would see on a more regular basis in 2023. Maybe that's the best way to state it. Agreed. I and I think I think the coach staff has to find that that right formula of of carries. And, and play calling as it pertains to to running, and Toll Philly showed his ability to put his foot in the dirt and and go north, go north. You know, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see his touches go up, Toll Philly's touches increase, and use Benson in those spots where he can be most e- effective. But I just don't, I don't know if what we're asking Benson to be if we had the time this season for him to become that. When you have all the weapons that we have, you have to go with productivity, right? Yes. And I think that's the point. Now, on the other hand, I will say this, and William Floyd mentioned this several times in the in the post game and toward the latter half of his commentary during the game, that Norvell is a run-first play caller. And you could tell in the first half that there were body blows. Like our offensive line was straight up leaning on Southern Miss's defensive line. And we were just waiting and and basically wearing them down. And and that in part, I do believe, is what led to Benson's big run in the third quarter, at the beginning of the third quarter, right? So it's it's body blows. It's it's taking, you know, taking all those shots that eventually – Something's going to break, and 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 William Floyd said time and time again, you know, you, you'll take. Sometimes you have to settle for the two, three, and four yard runs, so that later in the game you bust off a, a forty yard run, for instance. So, it's not possible for Norvell to continue to throw the body blows if the defense is not getting stops. Agree. You know, we're able to try and get Johnny going, we're able to try and get Benson going. Because the defense was getting stops. So head off to this defensive staff for um, calling great game and not playing down to the level of competition, but being locked in and, and just shutting things down. Yeah, I think that going off of the off Norvell halftime interview, he was not happy with the running game. I know we talked about the good, but the, 
he wasn't happy with the running game at all. His, I believe his exact quote was, we have to find a way to get our running game going in the second half. So I think that, I think that's one point that, you know, to, like you said, he's a running, he's a run first coach. He is. And when that's not working, he's, he's not a happy man. He's not a happy man at all, but that changed in the second half. So you spoke about Johnny Croc. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. Oh boy. Yeah. I think we all, and we heard reports, whether it was fall camp um, or, you know, um, summer, spring, that he was getting better. And I, I, I want to believe that he was, but some of that, those bad habits reared up last last night. And I'm not sure I've ever seen him drop that many consecutive balls. So I don't know what's going on. I think he has to get get locked in. We have to continue to go to him, but it's not gonna. We're not gonna have too many games where I think we should just overly push the issue. There's guys um, behind him, next to him, that are able to step up. We have a a receiving core full of playmakers. We got to start using them and putting teams away early on, not even giving them the thought that they can hang into these games. Bury them out of the gate. And I think forcing it to Johnny, if he's dropping, it just keeps teams around. We're not going to be able to do that in a couple weeks. We're not going to be able to do that in a couple weeks. I mean, to your point, I think we have, we've talked about it in in previous podcasts. We have such an an established, deep, wide receiving room, right, that you don't have the luxury. If someone's not producing, you move on. I, I truly believe that at some point, it's Jekyll and Hyde, man. He'll make the great catches. He'll make the tough catches. What? All the first down catches we had to have against LSU. He was there for them. But come on, man. This is your money year. This is your money year. This is where you have to prove it. You're, you're the one thing that that is holding you back from being an elite receiver. Potential first round opportunity is your hands. You've got to show it. And if not, guys like Darian Williamson will. Williamson had, you know, that catch, the touchdown caught, catch he had was great. You got guys that, you know, I think, again, as we see Destin Hill continue to get his feet under him, Winston Wright, when Kentron gets back healthy, Hakeem Williams, like those guys are itching to get those opportunities. And there will be a time that I'm not saying Johnny is done. I'm saying you've got to start producing in those moments. You've got to start making those catches. Those are huge drops, and you can't have those drops against a better team. It's tough. It's tough because I think I think we were all very optimistic before the LSU game as far as, okay, this team has a chance to, to win the ACC, a chance to get to the playoffs. After the LSU game, I believe us, between us and the fan base, like it went from that to we are really – one of the few elite teams that exists in college, this college football world of 2023. Johnny Wilson is the difference between an ACC championship team and a national championship team. We can't take him off the field because he is a legit number one receiver. But if he's on the field and not playing like one, we cannot compete for a national championship. We can't. That, Bill, that, that, that point that you just made is significant. That's a big that's a big statement and it makes a lot of sense. I don't know that I would have thought about it that way prior to you making that statement, but we're in a fortunate position where we have two legitimate number one receivers. We'll talk about that in a second. But how many teams in college football have guys? So let's assume for a second that Johnny Wilson is making these catches. Let's assume for a second that coming through two complete games, Johnny only has one drop credited versus what, five or six in two games? And, and if he had one drop, we'd be like, oh, okay, you know, there, that's – he's got his one drop, whatever, but you'll take that with all the things he does good versus now it's, it's a question that's seeping into our head, right? Mm-hmm. But let's assume for a second that – let's assume for a second that he did only have one drop. Now you have two legitimate NFL caliber receivers. There's not teams in college football that have that luxury. And to your point, that that could very well be the difference because we've seen Travis is putting them where he needs to put them. 
Yes. J- JT yes. is putting the ball where it has to be. It's our receiver's responsibility to go to go get it. Yeah, no, great point, Phil. You know, you have Keon on one side. You have Wilson on another side. The stress that that puts on the defense is tremendous. But we also have to compound the problem and say, we also thought Benson was going to put a lot of stress on teams. So if Benson is not performing where we thought he was, and Wilson is not performing where we thought he would be, you know, is this offense as super elite as we thought it was? And yes. that's why, yeah, and, and, and uh, clearly we saw LSU that it is, but we can't have the two of them not producing on the same time and, and, and still convincingly beat teams and, and, and overcome the slumps of trap games. Well, no. yeah. So, so here's the thing though. You put up 31 first half points, you put up 66 in a game. That's elite offense. I mean, you, I mean, it's hard to say. So I guess the question for me is we are an elite offense guided by an elite quarterback, but could we be a transformational offense? Could we be a, a team that is just national winning, championship, a national championship offense, right? Not because we've seen teams in the past that that maybe their defense wasn't great, but their offense was so elite it put their whole team to, and lifted their whole team to an elite level. I think Florida State's got a really good defense. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but I think to your point is we do have an elite offense, but not so elite that you can rely solely on your offense. If that makes sense, I, I you Correct. don't put. You right. don't put 66 points up against a decent Southern Miss mm-hmm. team. They're decent. Like, let's call mm-hmm. it what it is. It's a decent yeah. team. Yeah. yeah. So it is an elite offense. I just think that there are missed opportunities that, again, you can't have a subpar offensive performance against some of the better teams on our schedule. Agreed. And And when you compound. So I just think that there's going to be a time, probably pretty soon, where, where you may have to look elsewhere. And then it's crazy to think, what if Johnny Wilson is the number three receiver, right? Like, and is is his ability or opportunity in a de- diminished role, is that better for him? Maybe he, maybe he's not good under pressure of being the number one. I don't know. I don't think, I don't think we can compete for a national championship without Johnny being Johnny. Right. I don't think that I mean, like you said, we we did put up 66 against a decent team and I'll take that all day. But if we were looking down the road, those opportunities are going to become less and less. Right. I mean, because think about it. We watching that first half, we all know there's no reason we're having to go for it or go for fourth downs on two, like two or three different occasions in the first half. There's no reason. There's no reason. He that was Norville sending a message to the offense that you guys are not getting it done right now. And you're we're going on for on fourth down because either you're going to get it done or you're going to put this team in a bind. So you pick which one is going to be. Right. And, and so as we get to the Clemsons and, and further down the road and the ugly games with the horrible ACC officials, those drops are going to become monumental. And so, but if you take them off the field, like you said, or give them a diminished role, now teams are able to roll coverage over to the other side to who is now our number one receiver, right? And which is what what made us so dangerous is you could not roll coverage. You could not double because there's ones on both sides. So that, I feel, takes us from a national championship contender to an ACC championship team. Phil, that was a great take. I, I love your your point about Norvell putting it on the offense. Like it was fourth and ten. It exactly. Fourth, it was fourth and exactly. ten on our side of the field. On like, our side of the field. And Norvell's like, Norvell's like, hey, we're we're going to get this. And yeah. and we did. And we did, right? But but I tell you what, and, and that was in part due to Jordan Travis being Jordan Travis. But <laughs> but but for real, I that's a great point. And and I agree with you. Let's talk about that other receiver though for a second. Ooh. Different. Different. 
listen, real talk, he should be playing today as we're recording this on a Sunday. Different, 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 different. That guy's different. NFL. That guy's NFL receiver, man. And and, and and I have zero hesitation saying he should be – he is wide receiver one. I don't care what Johnny does the rest of the season. Absolutely. Yeah. Keon Coleman is a guy. I mean, that he is a guy. That, that man, woo. Hell yeah. And I have yet to see a replay of his Arthur Blake impersonation. And, and I'll, just quick history, uh, Arthur Blake was a two-time Olympian, Florida State track and field great, King Arthur, and Montreal, and Barcelona Olympics. But I have yet to see a replay. But I saw it live, and it happened not too far from, in front of me. That play vaults. That play solely vaults him to all-time highlight reels. They're going to show that for years to come when they're showing highlights of Florida State plays. That was an all-time play. I just hated he didn't score because had he had he scored. Oof. But but nonetheless, it was a it was a phenomenal catch, run, hurdle, Everything. run some more. Unbelievable. Unbelievable play that shows his yeah. athleticism. And he didn't hurdle, he didn't hurdle like a guy tried to go low and hit him at his ankles. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. My my man was five foot off the ground when he when he hit the hurdle motion. That dude is an elite athlete. Keon Coleman, Keon County. <laughs> wow, he's a problem. He's that that play in itself was was amazing. But it was but it's like what was crazy leading up to it. There was a play. He didn't drop the ball. Something I can't remember what happened. The ball was thrown to him, and something happened. And so you know they were doing their their mass hockey subs, and like he waved the receiver off, like no, like no, 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 I'm staying out here. Like I'm good, I'm staying out here. And I, it, he he took a hard hit. I think the ball was thrown in his direction. He he ended up not catching it, but he took a, a pretty hard hit. Was so that the one to- where he got hit for four? Yards out of bounds. Yes, so far. yes, yes, unbelievable. Yes, and it was on our sideline, which yes. is inexcusable. But go ahead. And so they they're trying to pull him out the game. He's like, no, I'm, no, I'm I'm good. And then a couple plays later, there you go. And even on that play, Williamson was coming in, and it seems like he was coming in for that slot. You know, mm-hmm. and I feel like Keon was still supposed to be on the field, but on the other side of the field. Yes. And Keon was like, no, nah, I'm already here. Y'all just stay over there. Yes. But yes. He probably already knew what time it was. He was, yes. he was like, nah, he I'm about to, I'm he about to get this. <laughs> he did. I, I saw him look, I saw him waving at Williams and as he was running, trying to uh, switch sides with him. He's like, no, nah, stay over there. Stay over there. I'm, I'm here. So we have an alpha in the room. And, and I think this is why coach can't afford to continue to force feed Johnny if he's not producing because Right now, everybody's, okay, let's get Johnny going because we all know what we are when he is going. But it's going to start getting frustrating in that room. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, that's a great point. But but think about it this way. That's a hell of a decoy at some point during the oh, season yeah. for, for guys like Ryan He still Ryan needs Hill. to be on the field. He still that's, needs that's to be my, on the field. So, mm-hmm. so let's, say, let's say, for instance, let's say, for instance, now we see them rolling double coverages to Keon away from Johnny, right? Well, Johnny's still gonna demand attention. His size determines that. Like he, he's just too big, six seven. What well, they say he'd be the tallest wide receiver in the NFL today. So really, he's still really gonna like demand gonna attention. Be a tight end. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, he got he got to catch the ball first, or he's gonna be a coach. <laughs> but the but here but here's the thing though. My point is he's still gonna demand attention, and at some point during the season, if he's not catching the ball reliably, that is gonna open up things for the slot receivers. You're going to have guys like Hill and Wright that are going to be very productive because of the attention that Coleman is going to pull, coupled with the fact they got to at least give some attention to Johnny. That's going to open things up. You got guys like Bell, Wright, Hill, Douglas, and Morlock that should feast due to him being on the field. Yeah, it's like we said, it's it's a good problem to have, right? These are good problems to have. And, and so, I mean, he, you think about how far we've come in two years, man. Like to the point, Orlando Franklin, the former gra- Miami great, is literally during the game telling the world this team is probably as good or better than Georgia, and this is what he's saying during the broadcast. Like I think 
they, when he did his breakdown, he was like, the only thing he feels Georgia has better than Florida State was coaching. And I want to say he said maybe secondary or something. But he was, you know, quarterback, skill players. He was like, no, Florida State. O-line, I think. Oh, yeah, O-line. He gave him O-line. O-line and coaching. Let me say this. They were talking about – so the coach for Southern Miss used to coach with Norvell at Memphis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't know that coming into the game, and, and I didn't know it at the game, but listening to the game – or listening to post game, they were talking a little bit about that. And the coach for Southern Miss said, as they were scouting for the Florida State game, this was the best team that he's ever scouted against ever as a coach. And that includes the 2021 Alabama team that won the national championship that Southern Miss played a couple years ago. He said, this team is the most talented team he's ever scouted against. And and that's and, and he said, oh, by the way, that includes 2021 Alabama. So the pieces are there. The pieces are there. We just have to make sure that when the chips are on the table, that everybody's aligned and we're doing the right things and catching the ball. So let's talk a little bit about the first half dominant, you know, in spite of some some fallacies. We could have had 50 in the first half had it not been for some some mistakes. Our defense played very well. And, and I said earlier, I think that we have a legitimate top 10 defense. Our defensive line, in spite of not putting up a ton of stats, those guys are ultra elite across the board. And, and special shout out, we know Jared Verse. Pat Payton, I think, is is maybe the weakest link on the defensive front right now. And that's saying something because he was a, a freshman All-American and All-ACC Rookie of the Year. Braden Fisk might be the best defensive line on the team, including Jared Verse. That guy, 55, is a dog. I would agree with that. He yeah. he's he he will and can wreak the most havoc, right? Because he can pass rush as well as affect the run, and he he doesn't stop, man. Like he doesn't take a playoff. Period. He does not take a playoff. Well, and and the crazy thing is, the crazy thing is, is that you you really don't know how people are going to play up when they come from a smaller school, right? Like he came from what Western Michigan, correct? So yeah. so you think came from a smaller school. Sure, he played D1 at Western Michigan, but like how was he going to do playing up to to D1 talent in, in a I, you, I guess you can't say P5 conference anymore cuz there's <laughs> not even a power there's not even five power conferences, but you di- you didn't really know. It's always a question mark how how a transfer is going to do when they transfer up, but I think I think Norvell who is as Croc calls him the king of the portal, right? Mm-hmm. I think I think we're seeing now we have evidence that the guys that Norvell is targeting, i.e. Jared Burst, small school, you know, Braden Fisk, small school. You look at these guys, they can prove to be impactful. And and Braden Fisk, man, that guy, he's going to be the difference in a game at some point. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that guy is, is an absolute monster. And if you have Jared Burst and Braden Fisk on the same side of the field, oh, my goodness. So if there's any if there's any place that's we'll call it lacking, I think our defensive backs played very well. There was a couple outside of a couple of miscommunications mm-hmm. during the game, and I'm not talking about second half when we had all the young guys in, but even in the first half, uh, I feel like the play that Akeem, Akeem Dent Senior <laughs> pulled up hurt. It looked like he was trying to make up for a blown coverage that he identified and was just trying to get to. Mm-hmm. We st- so there's still some communication issues, and maybe that's the result of having a new DB coach. I don't know. You would hope that it's not a system issue at this point. I think we're just missing 10. I mean, Jamie, his leadership, uh, Alpha back there, very confident in, in not only his abilities physically, but just knowing it, knowing you know the ins and outs of that defense. We're just missing that Alpha that – everybody kind of just follows in the secondary. You know, I don't know who that alpha is to this point that everybody just listens to and follows. I mean, somebody I'm sure will emerge, but I think this is this is kind of a little bit of that. I think Shaheem is doing a great job. Hope Dent gets back here soon. But who who is going to have the physical and the the mental to to kind of get everybody in line and get that that secondary on a string communicating. Hey, you know what's promising though? You have Akeem Dent go down in the first half. There was zero hesitation to put in some freshmen. I mean, that speaks that speaks volumes. Oh yeah. 
yeah. Hussey, 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 Hussey stepped right in, and and I don't know that that wasn't an interception. I, yeah, I, I, did, like, I didn't understand why they didn't go to the replay. So they showed it a couple times in the stadium, and it appeared in the stadium that while he didn't catch it cleanly with his hands or with his arms, right, it it doesn't look like the ball touched the ground, right? Right, and, and, so, and I wasn't understanding why. Flo- I guess because the game was out of reach, so I guess they just wanted to keep it moving. But, but I tell I tell you what, man, Hussey. I mean, well, we'll talk about the young guys in a second, but uh, I just wanted to point out that in the first half, Dent goes down. There mm-hmm. was zero hesitation to put in some some young guys back there. And, and I, to your point, Croc, is maybe that shows us an opportunity where these young guys are a couple years from now. It's going to be loaded with the dogs back there. And, oh, by the way, we got K.J. Boulder. We got these guys coming. Lester, we got these dogs coming in. And we got young guys right now that are already showing it on the field, yeah. right? So that 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 bodes well for our future. Let's let's talk a little bit. I mean, second half, it was just a just an absolute the the beginning of the third quarter, right? So you go into halftime, you're at thirty one three, and in three minutes, <laughs> <laughs> in in three minutes, you hold them to a three and out coming out of the second half. Trey Benson busts off his his forty yard run, yes. big touchdown. And then the very next play on defense, we we hit a, a pick six with with uh, Jerry and Jones. By the way, Jerry and Jones looked really good, sideline to sideline. Obviously, the the pick the interception pick six was was pretty big. But I mean, you 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 put up fourteen points in three minutes coming out of halftime. That's a big deal. The team is scary. Like it's it's scary. Like it's and it's some parts we may sound like we're woe is me and down on the team. But I mean, I think when we speak about certain things we speak from a, a national championship caliber team, right? And I think, I mean, even last year, what we were speaking for a team that could surprise people to get nine, 10 wins, right? So, man, this team is just, they can do it in so many different ways, right? We're not just a team that could beat you with our offense, but if for some reason we get, you know, stuck in one of those ugly ACC low scoring games, with horrible officiating, well, we could play that game too, right? We have the we have the defensive front, all right. We have the run stoppers as far as linebacker goes, and the secondary is growing, right? We we didn't think we had much depth going into the season there, but it's games like this where you develop depth, and like and let's be real, like this is last night's game was the game of old, was the game of the glory years where we looked forward to seeing which freshmen were going to you know, have a great yeah. future at yeah. Florida State, right? These these were the games <laughs> where we watched all four quarters and we were more excited. We were more excited about seeing the freshmen than seeing, you know, the Peter Warwick's and 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 the Jameis Winston's do their thing. We're like, okay, that's great. Let's get to the third quarter so we can see who who has a future. Slow here. down, slow down, slow down. I, there was there's absolutely zero people that's ever lined up in Garnet Gold that I was more excited about than the number nine. Uh, I mean that may be true, but at one point number nine was a freshman, and you were I, hey, listen, to see him I, play in the third quarter. I get your point. No, I I'm, I said that in in jazz because know, that's that's my favorite. That, number nine <laughs> is, is my number one. But I to your point, it it, it it feels like it's been a long time since we just knew since we just knew we were going to see some of the some of the young guys get in there and produce. Yeah, it's been a it's been a long time. <laughs> We've suffered for so long, <laughs> so long. <laughs> and and Phil, you said it. I want to reiterate. You're right. We're not down on this team at all. And in mm-hmm. fact, I, I said I said after LSU that I think we're undefeated in the regular season. I I will I will stand on that. Especially looking at what happened this week when the Alabama losing, Florida State's going to be Ooh. a top. They're going to be a top three, four team when the new polls come out. Man, this is a legitimate team. And and really, now granted, Clemson did they did not look good at all. In the first half, now they they ended up putting sixty six up, right? But listen, the, you know, coming out of we're going to go to Boston College. I think Southern Miss beats Boston College. If those two teams lined up, Boston College Agreed. is not a good team. They Agreed. they won they won by three against Holy Cross. Okay, I, Boston I College. That. Now, so you you go and you you get a uh, a true away game out of mm. out of the. Get it on the books. You travel, get that feeling of of loading up on the bus, getting on a plane, going to play a game in a different stadium in a new locker room, to get ready for Clemson. Like all eyes are on the Clemson game for us, right? Like, mm-hmm. and yes, I'm saying we're looking past Boston College. 
If you come out of Death Valley, if you leave Clemson and, and Florida State is 4-0, and I have zero reservations. Like, this team will be undefeated, and this team will be a playoff team at that point because they're, they're not losing like they have in the past to a, a sneaky wake Virginia Tech team. It's not going to happen. Yeah. You said something that I, I ain't like, though. I don't want to look past anybody. No, nah, I'm looking past Boston College. This team is terrible. I, I'm – I, I, I feel you cried. I'm not. I still want. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I still want us to make sure that we do our scouting. We prepare. We'll deal with Clemson. Clemson week. I'm sure they probably in the off season did some stuff to to kind of prep for that. But. but you know what? I'm not in those meeting rooms. I'm not saying the players or the or Norvell. I assure you, is not looking past Boston College. Hi. Personally, oh, okay. Me. okay. I'm okay. looking cool, past cool. Boston College. That game, that game <laughs> is right, nothing sure. to me. For hey, sure. All right, for listen, sure. we're on the I, same page. Hey, I'll be representing it's row well, one. As row long one. As ACC yeah. officials, nice. as long as okay. ACC officials exist, I I, I will be game, anxious. Every game, every game makes my nerves bad. As For real? As I'm not gonna have anxiety. About I, didn't, I mean, not every game. I didn't have anxiety last night, but. That first quarter kind of was like, what's going on here? Like, uh, yeah, really was, going to... yeah, no anxiety, though. But I just, I don't, I'm very interested to see how our games are officiated because they're already, when just when we think it can't get any worse, I feel like they're going to say, hold my beer. Watch this. By, by the way, I, I just, I don't want to go back to this, but I'm, I got to real quick because I just saw this. Johnny Wilson had the lowest PFF score on the team. Targeted five times with no catches and had a team low 36.3 PFF score. He had five drops. Five targeted five, five times. Five drops. Okay. Back to back to the second half and the young guys. Let me tell you what, man. Staying with the wide receivers, mad impressed with Hakeem Williams. And, and I and I tell you why. Like he moves fluidly. You see why he was a five-star recruit. But I'll never forget when Lawrence Dawsey was a wide receiver coach, and they were asking him about you know the twenty back in the twenty thirteen national championship. Back during that time period, somebody asked him about the wide receiver group, and and he said, "Oh, our receivers are going to block, or they'll just get run over slowly, meaning they're going to get their back run over by by mm-hmm. one of the FSU running backs." Hakeem Williams blocks. Hakeem Williams was putting dudes in the dirt and, and driving them two yards out of bounds. Hakeem Williams is physical. And he's fluid. Very Love impressed by Hakeem Williams. Love to see it. Love to yeah. see it. He, he was blocking. Um, was that on that span reverse or counter? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I can see Norvell kind of setting some stuff up. Maybe um, play action that counter and, and give him a shot deep. Yeah, well, Norvell is great at setups, right? <laughs> We've already seen a reverse with a, a double, you know, a double pass situation with, with span. Now you got you got him on an end around. Let me say this about Deuce Span. That cat's got a different gear. He legitimately Bro. looked like the fastest person on the field on that reverse. When he took that ball, he, he had a gear nobody else was was looking at. He looks comfortable. He looks so much more comfortable this that's year. A, that's a great that's a great way to frame that is his comfort level has skyrocketed. Because last week, last year, he did not look comfortable, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, he he did mm-hmm. not. He did not look like a fluid skill player. He looked like he looked like it was the the whole round peg square hole situation mm-hmm. where he just was trying to trying to make it work and it just it wasn't Bless fitting. You. However, man, he 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 looks he looks like a Florida State receiver. Almost and you think came about down it. with a big grab. He did correct, correct. He did. DB just did a great job of breaking it up as they came down. Yeah. Yes. So he he looks a lot more comfortable, and, and it's like people forget he he committed to Illinois as a quarterback. He enrolled at Illinois as a quarterback, right? And and then switched over to receiver. Obviously, now now I looked over at Florida State. There was a time in the first half where every single skill player was a transfer. Every one of them you had. So so as you're looking across, you had Wilson and Coleman on the outside. You had Jaheim Bell at this time lined up in the slot. You had Morlock lined up at the other tight end place. You had Wilson, or excuse me, you had Travis and Benson in the backfield. Every single skill position was a transfer. And then half the offensive line at the time was a transfer, too, between Big Meech, 
buyers, uh, you know, so you think about, uh, and and I don't remember, uh, Roddick. So you, so you had 80, 90% of our offensive, our starting offensive unit was, was transfers. That's crazy to me, but it speaks to the kind of guys that Norvell gets it and it mitigates how someone could be on the two year anniversary uh. on the two year anniversary of that Jacksonville state game, how we could flip the entire roster and be competent and competitive. Wow. It's amazing, man. We've we've come we've come a long way. I say that we have definitely come a long way. We are here. You guys got any closing thoughts on the game? Who who, who surprised you the most of the young guys? Ooh, go ahead. I'll say Hussey. I know I didn't see him a whole lot, and when it when it really mattered, but just to see him break on that ball, his athleticism and instinct was on display. So I, I'm. I'm very confident in about the future of the secondary. I would say Blake Nicholson. Shout out. He looked Blake like he Nicholson. belonged, didn't he? He, he looked, looked like he belonged. Like belong. and, and I know they were saying he, he'll be fine once he puts some weight on. But he one, he looked like he belonged. And then the one play that, I mean, he was out of bounds when he caught the interception. But... It was great coverage. Like he co- he covered, he covered that that tight end and, and got his head around and and you know he and put himself in position, but he was he was impressive. I, hey, I, I feel like it was three years worth of people saying Telvin Smith had to put on weight. That's and true. All, and all That's he true. did was become an elite collegiate linebacker and 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 played pretty well in the pros too, right? So That's true. being a fluid athlete and and man, there was a wheel route that went to the running back that was obviously Nicholson's responsibility. And he went to the sideline with him and turned, flipped his hips and step mm. for step was with the running back on a wheel route. Right. Yeah. So Nicholson, I'm going to go with Brock Glenn. Oh yeah. that was Okay. Nice. <laughs> I, I think, I think that I feel who knew that he had those wheels, right? Like you, you kind of didn't know what to expect. We've heard some things, but man, he looked comfortable running the ball. He looked comfortable all around. What you got, Phil? It's I no, I'm with you. I agree. And I, you know, they say sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. So us at home, towards the end of the game, where you know they're just trying to get the game over with, they they pan over to it's Jared Verse, it's Trey Benson, and it's Jordan Travis, and they're all standing there talking with each other. And the fourth person standing with them is Brock Glenn. And he's not even part of the conversation. But you could tell he's just there trying to soak in whatever they're talking about, right? But it's like, and it's like nobody else is around. It's just literally them four. And everybody else is at the other end watching, you know, watching the game. But he's just standing there kind of like, I know I'm not supposed to be here with you all. But whatever you're talking about, I need to hear. And I, I just, that, 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 pan, that pan shot right there, I was like, okay, that, that means something. Look, man, that perspective right there is why we pay you the big bucks. That means something. Big bucks. That's why we pay you the big bucks. Because that, so I haven't watched the game on TV yet. So I have not seen that. That's that's incredible insight. And I think it, you know, we talked about this a few weeks ago about is our starting quarterback for our opening game against Georgia Tech on the roster. He may be. He may be. Not to say Tate looked bad. I mean, all he did on his first pass attempt was throw <laughs> biscuit up for a 40 yard touchdown. <laughs> biscuit. <laughs> but, but Glenn looked good. And the fact that they trotted him out three versus AJ says everything I need. Everything, to know. everything. So listen, I am excited for the next couple of weeks, man. Super excited. I Next week, Boston College looking to go three and oh, we're going to have to get creative on that particular podcast recap because I will be in Boston and then I will be shoulder surgery so that, <laughs> that that recovery is going to be fun i'll be watching the clemson game in a sling no cornhole for you no cornhole uh, yeah you can't do cornhole with a shoulder surgery a wow. real a, 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 a real a real shoulder injury yeah, i mean that's that's, that's funny since we're talking about um, <laughs> realities can we go ahead and get those uh fancy football tallies Oh, you've been, wait, bro, you've been waiting we 45 here. minutes for that. I thought we were. I mean, I, I'm waiting no, to see when we're no. going to drop it. 
No, you've been waiting a whole season a and three whole games. Season for that. Or not. Games, boy. Here I come. You can <laughs> okay. die. All right. Gonna all right, all right. You. Let's get it. Let's, let's run these numbers. Oh, all right. All right. There was a big talk last week. There was a big talk. So oh, let's see what let's, happens. Let's, uh, let's, let's close out this podcast with... Uh, y'all, see how they was, y'all see how they were going to do me, right? They weren't Croc, even going Croc, to, whoa, to, Croc, to mention... Croc, they weren't even going to mention hey, the fantasy let's not, this week. Let's, let's not act like we didn't, we didn't completely do an entire second half of last year that was, like, don't do that. Don't do not, that, bro. Don't do that. That was that don't was after that, um oh, it was man. a clear winner. Let's go ahead and let right. the people know. You so know what happened game with your place. two. Game two. We'll start third place in points. Mm. Third, third place in points. Phil, after last week scoring 54 and being in third, <laughs> being in third place last week with 54, last uh th- today. You came in third place with Thir- 13. Wow. Thir- 13 points. It's fine. Heisman. It's fine, man. It's fine. I, we have thank, a team meeting. Thank you for we participating. We have a team meeting today. So, uh, uh, Lawrence told Philly, showed out and got you a full seven. That's what I'm talking score. about. Way to step up. Way to step up. Second place in week two was myself. Had 38. So, almost tripled your, your production. And I had 38. My high score was Kaziah Holmes, actually. Hey, shout out to Kaziah. He looked good. He Man, our running back room is deep. I feel like Norvell had our rosters under his play sheet and said everybody everybody not on field squad gets a touchdown. He, he didn't. Yeah. When, when, you, when, you, when you pronounce, and, and I know I'm usually humble. I really am. But on, on this week, when you do, you know, first place, can you can you just go ahead and, and say a new – did he say usually humble? No, and new, not 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 and still, but and and new. I'm I'm the new leader. Let's go ahead and run. We haven't oh, we haven't even sorry, we, we haven't even got there yet. Uh Kaziah Holmes was my leader with 12 points. Keon Coleman and Marcus and Douglas had 10 each for me. I had 38. Croc had Croc came in first place this week with a strong showing, primarily on the back of Trey Benson's three touchdowns. Trey gave him 28 points. Total points for my Croc. Guy. My guy, number one draft pick. Trey Benson came up huge. You also had Darian Winston got you 10. Jones with the pick six was pretty big for you with 11. I mean, okay. And uh, hey, shout out Dennis Briggs Jr. We didn't even call his name, hey. man, but that, he's part of that defensive line. Hey. that's just elite. I, hey, I saw value in you. I saw value in you. <laughs> oh, okay. This okay. guy. 79 points, Croc. Ooh, Jesus. 79 points. Now, 79. now, it was not. I don't remember you shouting to the Lord when I had 87 last week, but yeah, he had 79 uh, 87, this week. That's big money. That's big money. That's big money. Big money. So, so for for the week or for the season thus far, Croc, you you are still in second place. Okay, okay, I could take that. The 87, so, so the 87, 87 still carries it. Yeah, yeah, 87 yeah. still carries it. So, so uh, total. Total point spread through through the two weeks. I have I'm still leading by two with 125. Crocs Nobody at 123. Cares. Thank you. And Thank you. Phil is about half of us uh, at this <laughs> point with 67. So and, oh oh, um, we're in striking distance. We're in striking yeah, distance. Strike He's a second half team. He's a second half team, much like Florida State has been uh, in striking the last distance. couple of weeks. Striking so, distance. Uh, that's a wrap on week two fantasy. All right, guys. Boston College coming up. Up to Beantown, I hope to report back with some of the best clam chowder I've ever had in my life mm. and, and see a little history. Be looking for me. I'm in row one, section Q, so I'll be, I don't know, 30-yard line, first row right behind. I'll be wearing the third no hat. Be on the we'll regalia. Say, we'll less. Regalia. say less. So, and, and then we'll see again. We'll try to do a recap maybe quickly after the game. If not, you guys can hold it down. I trust you. Just the two of you to do a Boston College recap. Shouldn't be a whole lot to it. And... All right, we'll reconvene soon, guys. Uh, it feels good to have be two and zero with two dominating performances and, and being a top five team. This, it, it feels very, very good. It's where we belong. It's where we belong, gentlemen. Third and zero. Yeah. <laughs>